Hello everyone and welcome back to <coughs> SMP Fan TV and another instalment of Thursday Night Live. Uh, tonight, joining myself on the panel, first and foremost, down there, Phil sorting his hair out in his Jacob of Kirk Ride. Jacob, how are you doing? Oh, oh. A bit of music going on in the background there. I don't know who's playing. Well, let us know once Kerry's... I'm doing well, Jack. Mate, doing well. What's going on? What's going on? Are we good, Terry? I think so. Right. Jacob, <laughs> hello. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm decent, man. I'm decent. Doing well. Um, good growing the Movember beard, as you can see. <laughs> yes, looking very good there. Or as Terry said, looking like a young Danny Graham, oh, uh, apparently, mm. before I went on air. Yeah. Uh, we are also joined uh, down there by Jack Shields. Jack, how are you getting on? I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm doing all right. Mine, mine's not really a stylistic thing for more than I just can't be bothered to shave me. That's what my. Uh, it's not a fashion statement. No, I, I get the same problem, Jack. Um, <laughs> we are also joined up there as well. Uh, who was playing his music by Terry the Mad Mistake? Terry, how are you doing on this fine Thursday evening? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. I'm okay. Been for me haircut, so looking yes. hopefully all right. Nice, fresh trim. Um, before we start, however, we have got a little bit of sad news. Um, if you haven't already seen, it was announced yesterday by SAFC Fans React on Twitter uh, that their channel member, Graham Wright, unfortunately passed away. Uh, heartbreaking news, you know, I'm sure we'll all agree. Uh, we'd just like to see it from everyone here at SAFC Fan TV. Uh, rest in peace to Graham. Uh, we'll send all our, all our condolences to his close friends and family members at uh, what must be a really, really tough time for them right now. Um, so yeah, rest in peace, Graham. And uh, we can only imagine uh, the pain everyone's going through. Um, Saturday, lads, however, Sunderland, uh, welcome to Twitch Town, the stadium light after the international break. Uh, they seem to be in a bit better form than we've been in recent week- weeks. Um, Jack, I'll go to you first on this. Uh, if we don't get a good result, is it, is it Johnson now for you? Is he a goner? Uh, no, I think he's he will be very much on the brink. I think it's got the feelings of if we go one nil down, a bit of a nasty atmosphere. I think I hope we don't, obviously. I hope the fans try and stick with him, but I think. Everyone's on edge at the minute, aren't there? And we want to see a Sunderland performance. We want to see us go in front and and play well. And uh, yeah, I hope not. I think, but I think if he loses, I think I think he will be very much on the brink. I think if he loses the next two, I think he'll be gone. Mm. Yeah, see, I, I know we all have our different opinions on this, and I'm sure it'll, it'll all blow up uh, as it normally does. But um, I personally wouldn't get rid of him as of yet, um, even if we did lose against Ipswich. Um, but it becomes it becomes tougher and tougher week on week and game on game, doesn't it? To keep him in the job. I think that would be then five losses on the spin uh, if you're including the Papa John's trophy game, uh, which, you know, it's hard to justify keeping him. Uh, Terry, we all know your uh, Johnson out. Um, if he wins this game, it, 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 would you say keep him? Uh, what's your thoughts on it? Or is Terry frozen? Oh, Terry appears to be lost yes, Terry. Some te- some technical difficulties. Well, Jacob, I'll go to you then. No, um, Ipswich then is it is it, is it make a break for Johnson? Um, it's going that way. To be honest, I think it Saturday, Jack. It will all depend on the type of reaction he gets from the fan base. But then again, me looking at the game at the weekend, you know, put the managerial situation aside, looking at the table and the way how results went the previous weekend because we didn't play. In hindsight, this is a game we need to win. You know, we can't be affording to get ourselves cut adrift even more, you know, in terms of if we're going to challenge for that top two. And yeah, it's, you know, you know, we've had a week and a half off now and this is the perfect opportunity for some of these players to really show these fan base, show this fan base rather that, yeah, we, we mean business. You know, we've had a bad run of form recently and we've got the capability of going on another another good run like we did at the start of the season. And also, it will be interesting to see in terms of the type of performance we put out because will these players really want to put in a shift for the manager to keep his job as well? Who knows? You know, it'll all depend on the type of performance as well as the reaction of the crowd on Saturday. But this is a must-win game. We simply have to go into it and get three points. I mean, I'd be very surprised if the players didn't give 100% based off the situation on Johnson. I can't imagine them going out there not wanting to win, you know, with the intention of if we don't win, no. we'll lose the manager. I, I, I can't see that being the case. Um, Jack, I'll go to you on this while Terry's uh, sorting himself out. I mean, Jitter mentioned there the international break. We've had 
we'll have had 10 days away from football. Obviously, I know a lot of the lads are, are going away to their various national squads. Um, but do you think a break for a bulk of the squad and just a break in general from Sunderland uh, for most of them will do them some good? Are you, are you got a bit more confidence at, at all that because we've had a bit of a, a break from it all? I think it maybe came at a good time, particularly for Lee Johnson, because I think he was he was really. I mean, it was a Sheffield Wednesday away, the last league match we uh, we had, and it was yeah, it wasn't a great atmosphere and a bit of a nasty nasty atmosphere, and uh, yeah, things weren't weren't great that night. So I think it came at a very good time for him. It allowed him a little bit of breathing space. I know we all love Sunderland, but things sometimes do get a little, little bit passionate, don't we all? We all want the best for the club, but sometimes it can go a little bit the other way, whereby the passion actually affects. The, the, the team a little bit because we're, we're that passionate we want to win that much and I think it was turning that way on uh, on that Tuesday night to Sheffield Wednesday so I think it came at a good time for Lee Johnson I think what you'll see now is I'm, I'm looking for a reaction we've been poor for the last mm. best part of the last month now we've had some some bad performances awful results you know to lose as many as we have on the spin um, and now we want to see a reaction it's, it's do or die really it's last chance to loom the this game and the next couple probably for uh, for, for Lee Johnson I mean there's a lot saying this is his last chance and I don't think he could have too many arguments if, if, if he did go off if we turned in a poor performance so I think it came at a good time for him but you know you're looking for a reaction we've been poor for so long got Ipswich at home it's one of the bigger teams in the league at home let's let's have a go at them and let's see what, what, what the lads are made of Yeah uh, Jay about to see your quickie one in there yeah, I think another important reason why these players need to put in an extra, extra, like, passionate performance at the weekend is because they don't know where their future... I mean, the manager could potentially be looking to ship some of these players out the door in January and it's getting to that stage of the season, you know, approaching the January transfer window where a lot of players really need to prove themselves, otherwise they could be gone. As simple as that. Yeah, before we go to the Madden mistake, who seems to have um, well had a bit further of a haircut in there and, uh, with the addition of a cap. Now, I would just like to remind everyone that we are live. Uh, the live chat is there if you'd like to contribute anything to the show, read out as many of those comments as we can. Already on there, uh, Thane SAFC, uh, Last Palmer Smacking, David Walker, Mandy Gray, John Forbes, Dean SAFC, uh, <coughs> The Madden Mistake visits Terry's second channel, I believe that is, uh, DJ Earth, David Jones, uh, Christopher Lee, David Walker, uh, Ryan McCormack, Will Allen and Alan Carr, all on there. Um, Philly, hello to you. You see it replaced uh, Terry. Well, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know where Terry, I don't know where Terry is. I'm, um, I was just backstage trying to do it. He's here now anyway, so uh, so you can uh, you can ask him. You can ask him yourself what he was playing at. I'll, uh, I'll go backstage. How was his two-minute oh, holiday? There we go. Normality has resumed. Terry, can you hear us? Are you all? He's put his microphone back on. Showing his cone over. Yes, he's, he's nice new fresh trim that he got for the ladies. <laughs> and we're going to be joined by him any second. We'll figure out how to put his headset on. There we go. There Come we on. go. <laughs> Terry, are you back I had a power cut for some reason. A power cut. Very eventful. I know. Eight minutes this. Uh, Terry, we're on the topic of Saturday. Uh, Ipswich at home. Uh, we all know your thoughts on Lee Johnson. Um, what are my thoughts on Lee Johnson, Jack? What are my well, thoughts on Lee Johnson? That you Lee Johnson out, obviously. Didn't have I ever said that? Yes, you have, well, you've, you've indicated it. Multiple times. What was my thoughts? If you watch the show, what were my thoughts on Lee Johnson? I couldn't give you an, an exact. Uh, an exact report, but I, I could. I give him to I, up I, until I, I after the Ipswich was, match. Was it? Sorry, Terry. Anyway, so is it, it, it's, it's do or die for you then, is it this game? Is it? It is. If it's a terrible result in the same vein that we've been going in the last few weeks, then yes, for me, it's time for him to go and bring somebody else in a similar ilk, a coach, like the same sort of thing, but with different ideas and different way of doing things. If it's a good performance, however, and we just lose because the switch were the better side, but we see a much improved performance, then I'm probably going to be on the fence. But if we get beat the same as we've been getting beat, we get beat 2-3-0. or For me, it's game over. Um, I'm just intrigued, you know, Terry, obviously, I think a lot of the criticism on Lee Johnson has been that he isn't changing things. I mean, performances have been so poor, we're still lining up with the same team and stuff like that. And... Um, how, how would you line up on Saturday? What would you choose? Do you change the formation or any players in particular or bring anyone in who's not been playing? Tomorrow? There's a couple of formations kicking about, isn't there? There's the 3-5-2 the or Get the there's the 4-3-3. The yes. three, three. Here we go. Now, Quiet. I've been toying with a few ideas. Toying with a few ideas. 
But here's his oh, can we say that? Storm for the whiteboard this way. Yeah, I would bring it a little bit more in. There, there we, we go. go. That's perfect. Right, there we go. Yeah, now I'm um, the, <laughs> the four, two, three, one only works if we do the high press and stop this slow tippy tap football out of the from the back and this you know passing to this this to the centre backs and the passage about Hoffman again. That's not working. The four three three, however, is more attack and formation. We have to bring Broadhead into the fold. Broadhead and Stewart, we've got to have those two in the park together. Now for me, the only way we get around the four three three is because Luke O is not performing at the moment. I'm not going to diss the lad. I'm not going to slag him off. He's a great lad. He's played good, you know, over the last couple of years. He's having a bad time of it. Time for him to give him a rest. Try and recuperate, get better, get get, get better fitness again, get a bit of confidence again. So for me, Pritchard in the centre, Evans, Neil, and then Embleton, hopefully Embleton. He's lost a bit of confidence after that red card. I'm hoping he'll get his confidence back with those 10 days rest and come back in with Stewart and Broadhead up front. Alves, because I think Doyle again has had a few bad games. Young lad, confidence down, give him a break. Let him recuperate, get back again. Alves, for me, could be a, a decent unit. So Alves and Flanagan, and again, there's no other right back, as there really, apart from putting Alves over there. There's no other right back. So we can either go the 4 3 3, the 3 5 2, to bring these two lads in together. The 3 4, was it the, I forget what it is now, the, 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 four, the 4 2 3 1 system for me, leaving Broadhead on the bench, is what probably is going to happen on Saturday. For me, that's what Lee Johnson's going to play. He's going to play the old McGeady, he's going to play Gooch, he's going to bring Doyle and Flanagan. It's going to be the same old, same old for me with Lee Johnson. I want to see a different Lee Johnson on Saturday. Let's see what happens. Very interesting, Terry. Um, Jacob, I'll go to you. What did you make of, of Terry's proposed 11 and what would you go with on Saturday? Because I think we're all in agreement that some changes at the very least need to be made. Yeah, absolutely. Some changes and also the way how we set up on a tactical point of view as well in terms of what we need to do when we're out of possession as well as when we're in possession as well. And Terry touched on there, you know, playing the ball out from the back. Clearly, it's not been working the last few games, but from Lee Johnson's managerial time at the club in terms of how he likes to play uh, with that type of football, I don't really see him changing, to be honest. I think he will like to stick with it. And I think if he's going to do that, I just hope he's used this week and a half's break to work with the players on how to resolve that problem that we've been having. You know, if we're playing it out from the back, personally, I think if you're going to stick with that, playing the ball out from the back, tippy tapper I think you have to go with a free I think a flat back four allows the opposition to have more space um, and the strikers to create a, a more high press and then find the room uh, to exploit <clears throat> our back line and get shots on goal Percy so I think if you've got wing backs with a with a back three I think playing the ball out from the back I think it makes it a tad easier but I think what Terry's saying that if we do go with a flat back four, I think we need to simply hoof it to the big man, Ross Stewart. You know, his hold up play is fantastic, and when he's our top goal scorer and he can bring it down that well, as well as put the ball in the net, um, with him being frustrated, his, his body language the last year, you can tell he's being frustrated that he's not got the ball enough in the areas he wants it. You know, we need to do that more, <clears> simple as that. But, um, I actually didn't know is McGeady still suspended after that red card? No, it was only back now, so he could come back. But <coughs> yeah, will Lee Johnson want to start him? It could depend on his fitness. You know, Nathan Broadhead's back now could add pace into the front line. So it's all ifs and buts. You know, was it Corey Evans? Tom Flanagan had a fantastic match against the European champions, Italy, for Northern Ireland midweek. But you know, we can't look at that one game and say. You know, do they deserve a place back in the starting? Like I know Flanagan's been playing a lot recently um, for us starting, but it, for me, he's he's not been up to standards, and that we have to purely base it on how he's been playing for Sunderland. And it all depends. You know, there's various different lineups he could go with at the weekend, but you know, I, I think McGeady being brought back in, I, I think is a must for me in terms of getting sure. the ball into the box towards Ross Stewart. That would be my main key change, but I'm undecided on the rest. So, yeah, I, I would disagree with that myself. I mean, the, the, the formation and team I will go with would be a 4-3-3. Um, I'll just quickly run through it. 0-9 at right back, Flanagan, Doyle, Serkin, Evans, Hold, midfield, Neil and Embleton just to have him uh, in a front three of Broad and on the left, Stewart up front and Ellis Taylor actually on the right, I think has been in quite been quite impressive. Um, just on McGeady, I, 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 I don't think I, I, I think I would disagree with you. I, I don't think um, 
he warrants a start. I don't think he's been good enough personally um, so far this season. I just I, I don't think he offers us he's offered us anything at all. Mm. It's true, but then <laughs> like in the final third, the last two games w- which we've had without him, or is it just the one with the Sheffield Wednesday game? Even though he was poor up until that game, you know we could have done with the little bursts he offers in the final third, and you know he can have a poor game up until about 75 minutes and then all of a sudden he can just put in a fantastic shot in the top corner but he needs to do that soon because I can understand the fans frustration this season he's not been up to scratch but then again we we just need to inject that little bit of quality into the side and him having a week and a half off who knows his fitness could be more up to scratch this time and I think I would personally start him in behind Ross Stewart, like in a number 10 with Pritchard next to him and then Neil and Winchester in behind and I'd move 9 to right wing back to offer more pace on the right-hand side. Yeah, I'd be a fan of seeing uh, 9 at right wing back or go to right back and he's been poor in centre midfield. I agree he should be taken out of there. Um, I also think Winchester's made a few mistakes. It'd be nice to see 9 to return that position and I think he could... Um, gather a bit of momentum and a bit of confidence once again a position he's a bit more familiar with um, a bit more suited to his game Terry I know you wanted in just a few moments ago yeah um, we need to change it because it, Ipswich will know exactly will know exactly that my noise on my or is that someone else with that noise I hear a clicking noise all the time I'll, I'll mute myself right anyway I think um, Ipswich will know exactly what we bring to the table. Sunderland, so they'll, they've done the homework. They know what to do. We need to do a change. You know, Broadhead will find the space. We'll find the pockets. He'll do a lot of running. Like I said, ball up to Stewart. Stewart, knock it down. Find Broadhead. McGeady, for me, would be a better impact player after 75 minutes. I don't think he deserves a start. He cannot do what he did last game and just walk straight back into the side. That proves his favourites. He needs to be on the bench learn a lesson come off about 75 minutes impact player 4-3-3 three, three, the way to go for me definitely well, I think Loco 9 needs a break he needs a rest he needs to get himself sorted out again Loco 9 for me doesn't deserve a start I don't think McGeady deserves a start after Flanagan's performance against Italy you've got to give him a start because that was absolutely fantastic performance that's the Flanagan we want to see but he has good players around him that's the difference well, uh, Doug B on the live chat said so we need to control the midfield. Uh, not sure three midfielders can do it. Hitting it he's sitting an extra one or two numbers in there. Uh, David Miller as well said so there's no way all nine Gooch, Embleton or Doyle should be in the starting team against Ipswich. They've been very poor recently. Jack, you've been left out of things for a little while, but I'm going to come to you on this now. So in terms of, of going into the game Saturday, how would you approach things? I think... Well, well... I think you've got to be try and be as confident as you can. Like you say, I think the whole crowd is going to be on a bit of an edge because it's, it's it has the makings of that type of game. Lee Johnson's been under pressure. The team hasn't been playing well. I think we've got to start well. We, we have to we have to be at it, you know. And uh, Ipswich will know that we're gonna. I think we're gonna come flying out the traps. And if we can get an early goal and just settle the crowd down, I think we're in for a, not an easy afternoon, but a more comfortable afternoon. Obviously, consequently, if Ipswich get the first goal, it could turn a bit toxic. But I think. I think in terms of the style of play, I think I'm OK to knock it about from the back, but you have to judge it against Ipswich. And, and, and if Ipswich are pressing us high and they seem like they're going to get to the, get to the ball when we're knocking it about, I've got no problem with going safe, knocking it up to Ross Stewart. Yeah. Ross Stewart's very, very good in the air. I'm not, I understand what people are saying. It's horrible to watch and it, it's difficult football. And it is. I'm, I'm not a fan, as a rule, of going long ball constantly. But if you're getting squeezed in, in tough in, in areas near to your goal and they've got quick attack and athletic players that are coming at you, it makes sense. Knock the ball long to Ross Stewart. But obviously, not just knock it long aimlessly. Try and get people alongside him. I think it's it's excellent having a target man, but you can't expect <clears> Ross Stewart to win the header, chest it down, turn and run in behind. And that's what we're expecting him to do with Sheffield Wednesday. We're playing the ball up to him and expecting him to play the role of like three different strikers. I think... If, if we play Ross Stewart and we do go a bit more direct from absolutely no problem. We do have to try and get people alongside him to win the knock-ons or win the little flicks or even battle for the second balls. You'd be surprised at how quickly you can get up the pitch and start an attack. I mean, teams have done it to us for long enough. We've been at this level for four years now. You, you don't always have to play the prettiest football or necessarily, you know, and pass the ball as long as sometimes, you know, being a bit more basic can get you results. So Jack, what formation then? Jack Shields. Um, it's a tough one because I, w- I would like to s- if Broadhead's fit, I would like to see him alongside Ross Stewart. I don't know whether you go four three three or you play him just off Ross Stewart, like a four four 
you know, one one or something along those lines. Maybe. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm a bit confused about. We're well, not confused, but a bit unsure of the the, the formation you would go down. I think personally, I'm not a fan of three at the back with the two wing backs. I think you know, I just don't think it works for us. So I would, I'd be more inclined to go four at the back with two in the middle and then four two three one. Then like play Broadhead off Ross Stewart. So yeah, I, I think. Sorry, I think this is what Lee Johnson will play. This is the side he'll play. Simple as. Who's yeah. that with the arrow, Terry, in the in the bottom corner? That's the only thing. I think he's either going to start Embleton there or he'll put Pritchard there. So that's the only difference, I think. But I think it'll be the same team as normal. Same team as normal. Pritchard might drop into Embleton's space. That's the only difference. If you play that team, the Hooford football game's no good because there's no one there can feed off Stewart. There's no one capable for making feed off Stewart. That's why you need the broadhead someone up there who knows where the back of the net is, someone up there who will know to get the ball and control it. So for me, he's the only person I've seen actually making space, looking for the ball in the side in the last three or four weeks. I think for me, the, the crucial thing is that we've just got to change something, whether it's a player or a formation. I think the formation's a big one because it relates heavily to your style of play. Um and I think teams have really figured us out, and that's both defensively and it's offensively. I think defensively, teams have figured out the score goals again, so just to press us high. Um, and what matters then is, is your ability to, to, to change your tactic and stop playing out from the back. If teams are pressing you and they're getting the ball off you and they're not allowing you to play through the thirds, and you've got to have that ability to hoof it, um, to which I think going two up front maybe might be a smart option. I know I said 4 3 3, but I think 3 5 2 was another one that I would consider. Stewart and Broader up front together. Jack, I know you're saying you're not a big fan of the wing back system, but I just think it's something a little bit different. Um, something that it, you know teams won't have scouted against us. Um, you know, they're looking at the way we're playing with the 4 2 3 1 now and picking out how it is to beat us, how to win the ball off us, how to score goals, how to create chances against us, how to stop us as well. I think if you change it entirely, you go to three five two. The Ipswich might come with a, a mindset of Southern are going to play like this. All of a sudden, you're trying to play three five two. You completely shock the system, um, and you, you leave them shocked. And it also it does does give you that ability to have two up front, which you haven't really seen um, at all, to be honest, this season. Um, Broadhead playing just off Stewart. And I think the, the, the two players, two strikers, who are quite different. <coughs> uh, Stewart being a bit more athletic, a bit more physical, a bit more of a target man, and Broadhead being, you know, a bit more of a technical player who can maybe, you know, um, play a short little nice passes and beat the man here and there and do nice little tricks. Uh, Terry, you were wanting in just before as well? Yeah, I would ask you both a question. We'll start with we'll start with Jack. Obviously, Rich Jack. Jack, we'll start oh, with Jack Shields. Jack Shields, right. That like Kyle says on there, I've been saying for a while, there's no natural leaders in the side at this moment in time. You know, can Mr. Evans, Corey Evans, is he a, is he a leader? Is he a captain? Can he actually step up to the plate and become a leader? Do we have any leaders in the side anywhere, Jack? I, I, I don't think so. I was looking the other day and I would agree with you, Terry, the other the match against Sheffield Wednesday and Rotherham. There was no one to really organise us. Do you know what I mean? We seem to be at Rotherham. We conceded the same goal every time. They pressed us high up the pitch, no. knocked it in the wide area. They got it wide, put a decent delivery in and then a header in the box. And it was, it was practically the same goal about three or four times. And it was no one actually grab a few players and say, look, you know, steady it or settle it down here and let's calm it down and let's have a rethink or anything like that. Um, so I would be inclined to agree with you. And I think not just we've talked a lot about the formation and tactics, but I think I've noticed the last few games in our, in our losing run, the, we've not been able to match the intensity of the other teams. Other teams seem to be like quick and in our faces and we, we, we can't match them for intensity and work rate. We seem to be lacking on both of those on both of those um, fronts. So I think really, I think that that's as important. I mean, we can talk, you can talk tactics, obviously tactics are a major part of the game, but I think sometimes just your approach, we're being slow on the ball, slow to move it. And I think sometimes when teams are quick and athletic and pressing you high up the pitch and they nick it off you, you've, you've got, you've got nowhere to go really when that's happened. So, but yeah, I'd agree with you. I think I, I'm looking around and I'm thinking Corey Evans has been given it for his experience, but I, I'm not really sure he's, he's a, he's a leader. I always, I always think sometimes, you know, you're looking for a commanding centre-half as, as a leader or certainly an all-action centre-midfielder. And I, I haven't really seen that from Corey Evans. I'd be inclined to agree. Jack, what do you think? Is that um, should, should it be our number one target in January? Could be. I think you get exposed as having, you know, a lack of leader when things start to go wrong. Um, we had such a great start of the season in all competitions that, you know, probably a lack of a leader maybe wasn't like not having a leader maybe wasn't necessary. 
Um, but I think when things start to go wrong, that's when you need someone who can step up at the plate and, and take responsibility for other people as much as themselves. And I think that's what a leader is. Uh, Jack mentioned Rotherham there. I think Sheffield Wednesday is, is just as is, is just as, as good of an example where, um, again, it was more or less the same goal a few times. It was like leaving men unmarked at the back post um, and, and letting them have a basically a free shot at goal. Um, now that things are starting to go wrong, I think we are maybe starting to see that we, we could do with a leader. Um, I think I would be. I was inclined to believe that Corey Evans could be that. Is is he that? Looks as if he isn't. Maybe he's a true leader. Would have sort of things out by now. But by, by now, but then I also think you've got to ask the question of saying, is it all down to just having a lack of leader, or is a squad in general is everyone just a bit depleted? And I think it's that one. I don't think it can be put down to any individual in particular. At all. I kind of feel like is Johnson's now is trying to push push Pritchard forward to the forefront because Pritchard's been out a couple of interviews lately speaking out one or two times so with, the, with it being one of his purchases one of the lads he's brought in I kind of feel he's brought him in for Pritchard to be one of the ones who's going to sort of try and lead the team on Jacob do you think Pritchard can do that? He's got the capability you know considering he's come from a team that's in a division above us in Huddersfield Town but from what I've seen from him so far don't forget also when we signed him I think he came off the back of a bad injury he sustained for Huddersfield in the second half of last season. But, you know, he's had, I'd say, three to four months to get back to fitness now. And from what I've seen, it's it's not been great so far. I'm, even at the start of the season, he wasn't Lee Johnson's first choice in the starting lineup. But now he's starting to ease himself in. And I would say his best position is definitely as a number 10 in behind the striker. But when he was first starting games for us this season, there were periods where Johnson was sticking him out wide, which I didn't really understand. But, you know, the guy has got, when I look back at some of the goals he has scored previously in his career, you know, he's a great long range shooter on his day. And that's something I want to see more, you know, when he gets space outside the box, kind of like what Chris Maguire used to do for us back in the day, you know, have a dig at goal. You know, he has got the same with set pieces as well. I know when McGeady's playing, he likes to take him a lot for us, but give Pritchard a go, you know, eventually I think one of them will nestle in the net. It's just a matter of time of whether we'll trust him enough to, for him to do that and give him the confidence that he needs. But right now, um, I would say he needs to make a statement to our fans and put in a performance where we can say, you're going to p- play a key part this season because at the moment there's not been much signs that he's going to do that. See, Jacob, I know you're saying that you think like Pritchard, with his history of being at clubs like, you know, in the league above us, and obviously I know he came from Tottenham when he was a bit younger, but so far this season, he really hasn't impressed me that much. I've always thought he looks like as if he'd be a canny five-a-side player. Like, <laughs> short passing isn't too bad. He's got a nice touch. He can take around players and he might be able to, like, like it, 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 it's a short pa- short passing accuracy. That, that's probably his biggest attribute. But, I mean, can you really think of notable examples of when he's actually done anything? Um, as much as I know Emilton's been poor recently, at least we can, we can count a few goals and a fair few chances created. You know that if he starts in the game, he's probably either going to create you a chance or score a goal. Um, and if he doesn't, he probably will in the next game. I feel as if a Pritchard, he could go an entire game and be more or less anonymous. And I actually thought <laughs> it's Bradford, and I, I don't like to be too critical of players, but I thought he was dreadful really against Bradford. Um, I thought just about everything that he, that he did was wrong, gave the ball away nearly every time he got it and things mm-hmm. like that. So I, I know I know what you're saying in terms of he's come from a higher stand, standard, but I just think you've got to look at his time so far at the club this season. And to me, as much as Embleton hasn't been firing on all cylinders recently, I think you've got to say he he gets in ahead, gets in the squad ahead of ahead of Pritchard for me. Only time will tell. Yes, um, Terry, were you wanting before, or, or or is that am I making things up? I'm okay now. No, um, I'm a bit lost of, of where we are really. Um, so we'll move on to the, the next topic of the night and we're stretching for topics a little bit here. But um, I've seen a debate on Twitter. Someone put, uh, put a post out saying uh, Jack Diamond, he scored his third goal in only 11 appearances now at Harrogate Town. That's as many goals as he managed when he was there the last time, which I think was in 27. Uh, Patterson has also keep, kept third uh, kept his third clean sheet in eight games. Um, and there's been a lot of, of the, a lot of the uh, Notts County fans on Twitter as well saying how, how great he's been. Uh, Jack, I'll go to you first on this. Obviously, we are starting to experience a lot of goalkeeper problems, and I think we'll both agree that creativity from from out wide is, is a big problem. Would you consider recalling either of them two in the immediate in the immediate future to try and sort things out? Possibly Jack Diamond. I've, I've noticed him uh, popping up in, in Harrogate for Harrogate and creating scoring a few goals, and I think 
you know, it, I, I've always liked players that are direct. And I know Jack Diamond was a bit raw when he first burst on the scene, but it, it, there's there's a lot to be said for a winger that will attack the fullback and, and really have a go. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, his, his technique might be a little bit on the win, but I think if he can improve his his goals and uh, assists, which I know it's it's a league below for for Harrogate, but if he can improve on his end product, I think we've got a got a good player. That was maybe a bit surprised to see him let go on loan, but I mean. I think you know it, there's, there's definitely an option there when a team's are struggling in a, team, in a player that's creating chances and scoring goals. Possibly him, goalkeeper. I think I know our goalkeepers have been a bit shaky, but I, I still think we're okay in the goalkeeper department. I'm not saying we've got the two classic goalkeepers that we've maybe had in previous years. You know, certainly not even on the level of John McLaughlin, maybe. But I think I, I, I'm, I wouldn't. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of changing goalkeepers a lot. To be fair, I think you've hmm. got to stick it with your number one and pick them and, and, and back them a little bit. I know. You know, neither of them's really covered themselves in glory at this season, either uh, Hoffman or Burge. But I wouldn't be a fan of bringing a goalkeeper back in because it just, I think it just creates a bit of confusion at the back. I think for me, with Patterson, I look at a player who's key getting games every week. Um, that allows Carney to play for the 23s week in, week out, and it allows Hoffman and Burge to split the, the first team game between themselves over over the cup in the league. Um, and I just think bringing another one back into the fold, it's it's too many. Um, I think at this point in his, in his career, Patterson's got to be, what, 21 or something like that now, around about there. Um, you've got to be playing first-team football, I think, really. I mean, a general rule of thumb for me is once you're out your teenage years, you need to start playing first-team football at least fairly regularly. He's getting it out there. He won't be getting it back here. So I would keep him here, but I just thought it would be an interesting thing to bring up. Uh, Terry, I got you on this as well. Jack Diamond and um, Anthony Patterson, would you think of recalling either of them? I don't think Lee Johnson will for, for starters, as simple as. I think Lee Johnson's already made his mind up about both of them. So I think me personally, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be calling them both at them, get them more experience where they are. Like I say, it's a different level, isn't it? It's League Two. But then again, two teams from League Two have, all, have almost beaten us twice this season. So, you know, I think Harry gets probably better than those two teams altogether. So Diamond's doing well. Let him, let him see where, stay where he is for the time being. If things are not very good in January, then that might be the time if he's on fire still to recall him. Patterson again, for me, I, I would have left him in the side to begin with. I wouldn't have, I would have sent him on loan. He was doing a good job. Why you upset the apple cart? Now he's made a rod for his own back. Jack Ross, uh, Jack Ross, Lee Johnson with the two keepers because they're both making blunders. But that's just probably the system he's playing, the way he's playing the football, slow from the back. Would, would Anthony Patterson do any better in that, in that kind of playing that kind of style of football? Leave him where he is. He's doing well in Notts County. For me, this, again, in January comes round. If we're still in this dilemma where both keepers, and making a mess of things, then there's always an option if Lee Johnson's even here at Christmas. Do you know, uh, before I come to you, I just want to very quickly say there's 157 people watching, uh, 46 <clears> people <throat> have hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please do hit the like button. We're going to get to 100 uh, by the end of a Thursday Night Live. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, and sub subscribe to the channel is free to do so um, as well if you would like to do that and you won't miss any of our future streams or videos. Uh, Jake, up that the same two loan players have been talked about uh, seem to be doing quite well out at the clubs that they're, they're at. Uh, would you consider loaning, uh, sorry, bringing any of them back in? Uh, Jack Diamond, def I mean, wasn't with Diamond, didn't he return to the club this week? You know, there was pictures of him in training. Yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. I don't know. I was going to talk about that a bit a bit later on and see what people thought of that. Um, but yeah, I thought that was quite interesting as well. Yeah, I mean, Jack Diamond, you know, I've always been, a f I think he's a player that over time he will develop, but it's all about giving him a consistent run of games. You know, don't forget when Lee Johnson first <clears> came <throat> in, you know, Jack Diamond was a regular start. And let's not forget that the club offered him a new long-term deal at the end of last season. So I found that a bit puzzling, the fact that, you know, he was offered a long-term deal and then we loaned him out straight away, which I think loaning him out personally, because I still feel, even though we've got the likes of, is it Gooch and McGeady out, well, I think the team at times, it does lack width in there. And I think Diamond would have been a decent squad player to have coming off the bench. So, you know, what if he was to recall him in January, who knows, you know, it could be just what we need in the side right now. It'll basically be like having a January signing, but um, hopefully a more developed version to the one that we saw at the end of last season. So, yeah, Jack Diamond, um, if he was to come back, I'll be all for it. And was it Anthony Patterson? I don't think um, we'll see him uh, for Sunderland this year. I think he'll be settled at Notts County, considering I think he'll have more faith in, was it Hoffman or Burge? But, yeah, uh, Anthony Patterson, from what I've heard from Notts County fans, uh, um, he's got a bright future ahead of him. And, 
I don't know what his contract situation. Oh, we're back. Um, I don't know what his co- current contract situation is like at the club, but if we have, is that the Jack you know, to tie him. Uh, no, uh, Anthony Patterson. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Anthony Patterson. Yeah. Um, if we have the opportunity to time on a new long-term deal, you know, I'd say go for it. You know, he is a talented goalkeeper from what I've seen, you know, in the two league games that he had played for us this season. You know, he's solid, he's commanding, you know, not afraid to come out for crosses against big physical strikers. So, yeah, you know, if he was to come back in the future, sadly, I don't think it will be this season. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what type of Patterson we'll get. Yeah, um, I think Patterson for me is definitely one I would keep out on loan. I think I'm happy that he's that he's getting his minutes and, and our keepers up here and get their minutes as well. Um, but Diamond, I'm undecided on. I, part of us thinks if he's doing well down there, that's probably the best for his career um, and, and best for his development, which is probably best for us. Um, I don't. I think if, if we were to call him, I just feel as if you're running the risk of him not getting in the side at all um, because of other players who maybe a little bit better than him. And I think if he can get. Like I say, I think the, the way to get the best out of him is to have him playing week in, week out. And I don't think you'll guarantee that the game will play. Uh, Terry, I saw you what then? Yeah, let's ask, let's ask us all a question. Is it going to be Jack Diamond or, or Gooch? Who would you rather have in the team, Diamond or Gooch? At the minute, Jack Diamond. Gooch has been a ball. Jack, Jack Diamond. Been um, shocking. Joe? Uh, Jack he Diamond. He said Diamond. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think... That's a difficult question because I think over, uh, I would say Diamond right now, um, but I think the, the player who I would rely on, if you're excluding like you know really recent form, would probably be, probably be Gooch. But I think right now, I'd probably have to go for Diamond. Yeah. Um, go Are we going to do score predictions for Saturday night, Jacob? Or not? Yes. Well, I, I was I was going to get onto that, um, but there was a comment that I saw in the live chat first and foremost. Um, so if we were to go to a back three, this is from Kyle Martin. Who said uh, who who would our back three be? Says Doyle, Flanagan, and Wright. Um, if we if we do change to a back three, that is, I, I know we've got uh, split opinions. Uh, Jack, I'll go to you first as someone who who didn't want to change it. Uh, but if we were to go, who who would you who would your ideal back three be? I think mine would be Doyle on the left. Um, I would say Younger on the right. I know he got injured. Flanagan, uh, Flanagan, and Wright probably. Yeah. Um. I think obviously you're playing the wing backs. I think Flanagan's got to be in there. He, uh. I like Doyle. I liked him a lot earlier in the season. I think he's had a bit of a poor run the last few weeks. Callum Doyle, he is still only young. He is still learning the trade. Um, so I think I'd, I'd probably still stick with him if we did go with the three. And then the third centre half, do you go Alves maybe? Yeah, maybe Alves. Alves, Flanagan, Doyle. I, I'm not a massive fan of Alves. I'm not a massive fan of three centre backs. But I think if you were going three centre backs, they would probably be my three. Yeah, uh, Jake, we'll go to you. The three, the three centre halves. If you were to change the back three, who would you go with? You might want to unmute yourself first. Oh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, Tom Flanagan, I think, will be in there. I think he's a player that Johnson really trusts, even though he has had a few sceptical performances recently. But also, look at that brilliant game he had against the current European champions midweek. But we can't use that as something to look at that you define your place in the starting lineup. You know, you have to go by his performances purely for Sunderland. Um if you used to stick with that. So Tom Flanagan, uh Alves, you know, I still think there's a lot more to come from him. Um I think he's a young talented centre half on his day. You know, I think if we play the ball out from the back, you know, away at QPR on that Tuesday night Carabao Cup game, he looked really comfortable. Um, but I think it also depends with Alves, you know, his inexperience at times. It dep- depends who you play alongside him. And I think, personally, Callum Doyle could do with a rest right now. I think he is getting a little bit exposed. You know, he's trying to do too much when the ball's played out out to him when we're playing it out from the back. So, the more experienced option, I would say, Bailey Wright going in there. Yeah, and that completes my back three. So, Alves, Wright and Flanagan. Yeah, uh, Terry, yourself? Yeah, well, if Younger had been fit, I would be tempted to bring Younger in on the left-hand side. But with him being injured and it's Saturday coming up, I'd go exactly the same as uh, Jacob, Flanagan, right and Alves. I'd have Flanagan on the left, Alves on the right, and Bailey Flanagan on the left, Alves on the right, and Bailey right in the middle. <laughs> yes. uh, Jack, but like, I'd, I'd prefer to go 4-3-3 personally, though. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Jack, I understand uh, there's a topic of discussion you'd like to bring up. 
Yeah, I was just thinking we've, uh, we've rearranged the Oxford match that was meant to be earlier in the season. We've rearranged it for the first weekend in December, so like two weeks' time when we're meant to be playing FA Cup. But both us and Oxford are out. So we managed to get our heads together and, uh, and play. I was just wondering what people thought. I thought it was a good idea, really, because we've kind of we've had it in the, the previous last few years, haven't we? We've had games in hand, and we've always banked on the games in hand. Oh, if we win our games in hand, if we win our games in hand, uh, famous cliche, and we never seem to do it. So I was just wondering what people's thoughts were, whether or not they thought it was a good idea to kind of schedule in now, because the only downside is obviously we're in bad form at the minute. So do people think it's a good idea to get the games out of the way, or maybe? Potentially play it later on in the season, maybe when we're in a bit better of a mood as a club and the form's a bit better. Um, I, I'll start. I, I think it's a great decision personally. I think you should always try to play your games on a Saturday if you can. Um, as much as I'm a, an advocate for, for getting as far as you can in the cup, I think uh, you know too many Tuesday night games can just you know um, can just clog, clog yourselves up really. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm glad it was changed as well. It spreads it out a little bit more. Um, it'll be a higher attendance as well, all these little things, if it's on a Saturday. So I think it was a, a great decision all around, really, and uh, making the best out of an unfortunate situation, really. Uh, Terry? Well, I have planned to do some decorating that weekend, so that scuffed me plans, hasn't it? So, yes, definitely go to the football instead. <laughs> uh, Jacob, you, yourself, are you, are you glad of change off the game for Saturday? Yeah, all for it, mate. You know, I think we've seen in previous League One seasons, you know, when we play these fixtures later on in the campaign, you know, it adds more pressure to the side and a lot of the players we've had, you know, can't cope with the pressure in the latter stages of the campaign. So, yeah, it was good thinking by the club, you know, to get it played on Saturday, December the 4th. And, yeah, you know, if we can use those games in hand as well as the games before it to hopefully go on a similar run to what we had at the start of the season, you know, we could be in a decent position by Christmas, but let's just take one game at a time. You know, I've said that since the start of the season, you know, one game at a time we've got, was it after Ipswich, um, a trip to Shrewsbury Town and an away trip to Cambridge as well. So hopefully, you know, these run of games we've got can be um, another good run we put together, but only time will tell. Yeah, we've had a lot of uh, away games as well, I think, so far this season, especially with the Cubs. Um, I would just like to point everyone watching in the direction of the live chat. There is a poll in there now. Uh, we can cast, cast your vote. Lee Johnson in or out. The current result results stand that Lee Johnson in 62% and out is 38%. So if you'd like to go in and make your opinion clear, uh, very easily done by the poll, and we'll see what it is uh, by the end of the live show. Uh, we fill you sent the topic in. Um, because we are we are running a little bit thin of them uh, at the moment. So Ipswich had a terrible start to the season, but didn't sack Cook. Um, I think the form has improved a little bit as well recently. Um, should we not take a leaf out of their book? Uh, Jack, I'll go to you. Um, I wouldn't really. I don't like comparing to other other teams too much. I, I know that obviously Ipswich did have a pretty poor start. I think that was. I think that was a lot put down to the fact that they seemed to sign a hell of a lot of players in the summer. Was it about 16 players that they signed in the summer or something along those lines? I might be wrong, but I always I always think with players like that, they do take a while to settle in. And I always, I always when I look at Ipswich at this level, I always think they're, they're like we are, you know what I mean? They're, they're probably going to be in the mix, maybe playoffs, maybe just off. So I, I don't really like to make too many comparisons. I think you've got to judge what's going on at your own club, really. Um, I get the point behind it, you know, if you give a manager time and he might say out a bad run, but I think, um, I think you know, you can't make too many comparisons. I think you've got to judge purely what's best for Sunderland AFC, not really related to Ipswich. So I get where he's coming from, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't make comparisons. I think at the minute we have to judge what's best for us and whether that's keeping Lee Johnson or not, that's what our decision should be made on. Yeah, I think it's a very different situation where they, they went through a massive change and, you know, the, 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 the early poor form was probably a result of, of all that change happening in, in one goal. Whereas I think ours has, has been more of us experiencing a bit of a drop-off um, caused by any number of things. I think I think you, you can put it down to a lot of things, really, our, our poor run of form. So that's a, I guess that's a fair point to say and not directly compare them. Uh, Terry, yourself? Never mind this wee Philly bloke. Jack Shields talks the most sense. There we go. Completely but agree with Jack so Shields. Well. Completely agree well. with Jack. <laughs> it isn't. It isn't hard to talk more more sense than we I'll, like. I'll send you a five in the post. <laughs> right, let's get rid of him then, because he's not talking much sense, is he? <laughs> much better. <laughs> uh, Jake, up yourself. Um, should we should we be taking a little of there, in terms of keeping a manager and and, and giving him a bit more time? Uh, like uh, Jack Shield said, Dodds, you know, <clears throat> I don't like to compare, you know, 
to other teams and what they do. You know, I'm purely focused on my club and you can look at it in hindsight and say, you know, Ipswich, they've tried to build a new team this summer. You know, we've tried to bring in a lot of young, talented players and embed them into the current players we already have. You know, we ended up going on a really long start. They had a really bad run, but I think they made, was it way more signings than what we did? I think one of them being a player who I was open for us trying to get considering he was um, on a free transfer was Joe Piggott from Wimbledon. I think he'll be a danger on Saturday. But um, yeah, uh, I don't like to compare, but you know, it all depends on just what happens beyond Saturday and the situation we're in at the final whistle. And there's two sides of the fence, isn't it? You've got people who are saying stability, right? Keep the same manager in with stability. But then the other side, I mean, what guarantees this bloke is not a dog egg. You know, he might be a complete clueless nugget. You don't know, do you? So you've got to say, which you got to, how long are you going to stay with him? You know, is he going to turn it around? Is he not? We might get somebody in, another head coach who might be exactly the same more, but have class ideas. I might have a plan B. Might be able to turn the whole squad around, get rid of the donkeys who don't want to play for Sunderland and bring in the ones who do. For me, managers with favourites, I uh, just, I'm, I'm a bit dodgy with it. It shows, that, it shows they've got a bit of a soft spot for me, like. Yeah, and I, and I do think Johnson do, can be prone to having these favourites. I think Luke 9 is the obvious one. Like even playing him against Bradford, come on, like it's obvious the lad just needs needs to need to sit that game out. Um, if anything for himself, you know, I think 9 needs a, a little bit. I would say at least time away from midfield, if not time away from the squad in general, um, just to take the criticism off himself above anything else. Um, for his own confidence, really, I think it's unfair to, to keep forcing someone to play when, when they're doing so badly. Uh, Philly, hello. Can I ask a question? Yeah, why, oh, why has everybody got a problem with uh, Lee Johnson having his hands in his pockets as well? What's uh, what's all that about? It's, I'll pass that around here and I'll uh, I'll just be back in the background. Bye. I've not even, I've not even noticed that being a thing. Um, uh, Jack, I'll start with you. I'm, I'm a bit stumped. I'm not, I'm not sure. I know he wears, he wears a big long coat. I know that. I've not got a problem with it. <laughs> what does that mean then? <laughs> remember, that awesome Wenger, it? remember, that, remember Arsene Wenger's coat, man? Remember that massive long blue thing he couldn't tie up? I don't know if it's anything to do with that. Um, the I'm, I'm, I'm not, yeah, the I'm, I'm not bothered yeah. what he does with his hands, really, as long as he makes substitutions a little bit earlier and maybe starts <laughs> bringing second half performances a little bit better after terrible first half performances and maybe picking the right team or do what he wants with these hands for me. I, I, is that a thing? Is that is that a thing? Are people critis- are people honestly criticizing Lee Johns on putting his hands in his pockets, Philly? Well when we've done uh, when we've done the fan cams, the fan cam interviews, I've had quite a few people have gone and him on the sideline there, he just stands there with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I like, the bl- like the bloody magic shopkeeper really just appears from nowhere. Well, Go I on, bugger got- off, bugger off back in your hole. Get away. I that was short of night. Will of the whisk. <laughs> Sorry, Phil, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 well, I find that a very strange criticism. Um, it's not really something I'm bothered about. Uh, Jacob, yourself, are you bothered about what Lee Johnson does with these hands? Again, you might want to unmute yourself. It's improve the tactics on the pitch, then that's all I'm bothered about, to be honest, Jack. Uh, you know, it's, listen, I think, you know, when you become a manager of a football club like ours, you know, you have to prepare yourself. We we are such a dedicated and passionate fan base. You know, there will be at times where you will be under a lot of criticism. You know, we do have a certain <clears throat> section that, you know, normally does like to put a lot of the blame more on the manager than the players. But I think it's been natural. Like Even in the Peter Reid days, you know, probably our most successful manager we've had in the last 30 years he was getting really bad criticism during his tenure as well so it's happened to a lot of managers and you know we we have whether you agree with it it's it's all about opinions at the end of the day and you know lee johnson's going for a bad patch but you know i would really like for him to turn it around you know because we do really need it at this moment in time you know i hate the thought of people would want him gone simply because they they're just not keen on the bloke, you know, that's simply the wrong attitude for me. I, I don't think it's right, but yeah. Uh, yeah, he is coming under criticism and it's right now, it's just a case of, you know, particularly for Saturday, because it's a huge game, getting behind him as much as we can for him to galvanise the players and hopefully go on another good run again. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that going on in terms of people like looking to find excuses to, <laughs> to, to make the situation seem even worse. 
Um, hands in the pocket is, is probably one. It's not, I've not even I've noticed, but I think if people are criticising that, they're, they're, they're looking for things to pick out. Um, something that I, else that I would say is that interview when, when he said players' confidence at the heart of managing the modern day with social media, people instantly straight away jumping the, jumping the gun saying, no, he's, he's blaming the fans now. Um, he, he should be a goner. So I think, again, that's people who aren't keen on him as a manager or a head coach trying uh, to, to, to some way um, find more excuses. Jack, I know you want them, but I'll just very quickly go to Terry. Terry, are you bothered about what Lee Johnson does with his hands? I'm not particularly bothered what he does with his hands, but I mean, it's a cold time of year and it must keep these hands warm. But as long as he takes them out now and again and gives some abuse to some of the players, and in the nicest possible way, of course, you know, to get oh, them yeah. off the arses. And yeah. if they're having a bad time, if they're playing really bad, shout at the players. But what I want to say from Lee Johnson is uh, the adaptability to change the system, the adaptability to have a beat, the beat there, you know, uh, another way of playing football, you know, just to change, to grow, to learn, not to be stuck in the mud, stubborn. I want to say Lee Johnson succeed like every other Sunderland fan wants to, but when things go bad, the finger always gets pointed at the manager. That's just, that's just life. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, Jack, I know you weren't in there before. Yeah, I just think I think that the hands in the pockets thing. I think if you don't like him, you'll you'll find if you don't like him and you don't think he's doing a good job and you want him gone, you you you, you pick on a lot of things that he's he's doing wrong and you'll you'll blow them out of proportion, won't you? I think. But what I do think is I think it's a, it's a symbolism of a lot of fans now that really have made their minds up on Lee Johnson, and I'm not blaming the fans because you know his results have been poor now for the last sort of six eight games last month or so. And you know, at our level, you can't. Can you really afford to go on a winless run like he has gone on and not get any stick? You know what I mean? I mean, it, we're a big club at this level, and we have a, a large, passionate fan base. Any time a manager goes through a bad spell like this, he is going to come under heavy pressure. And I think it comes down. To, I've got a bit of stick in the chat for saying it the other week, but I think sometimes managers and clubs go well together. And when we appointed Lee Johnson, don't get us wrong, I would back him, and I thought, you know, as long as he gets the results. But I'm, I'm not sure Lee Johnson's the right fit for us for a club. You know, when you're looking at a manager in a club and do, does the manager in the club go together? I'm not entirely certain. I think we like our kind of rough and ready managers that shout and get get the get the fans going and they're in the faces. And to me, Lee Johnson, I'm not I'm sure Lee Johnson is that. But I mean, ultimately, I think, you know, it, it's it's at the stage where by now, he, a fan opinion of him, I think, is more negative than positive. And I think little things like the hands in the pocket thing might just be a sign that he's, he, he's maybe too far gone. Do you know what I mean? Maybe the situation's gone that far now whereby... There's a lot of supporters he just won't ever win around. There's a lot of Sunderland fans who doesn't matter what he does now, he won't ever win around. So, yeah, it's maybe a sign of that. Yeah, I, I think it's the same with players as well. Um, in terms of like players and uh, players and managers going, going well with a certain club, like Lee Catamore was someone who always kind of did well up here, even if he wasn't playing particularly well, because he had the, you know, even just the the, the posture and the body language and, and the attitude of, of someone who was a bit more rough and ready as opposed to someone who's a bit more reserved. Um, so I do agree with you in that sense. Jacob, are you wanting in just a minute ago with something? We were going to was it? Or was Terry wanting in first? No, I know. We've got you, Jacob. We've got a Terry. Oh, no worries, no worries. Uh, going, was it managers having their hands in their pocket? I mean, didn't we criticise Jack Ross for doing that a lot you know most of the time you know not being vocal enough towards the players but yeah I can, I can understand you know what Jack's saying you know some fans do have a visage of the type of manager they want someone who's really like rough and like really gives it on a vocal point of view for the players on the sideline but listen I think you, you purely judge if, if you know if the team's performing you know the manager deserves as much praise as the team and yeah, right now he's coming under criticism, but you know, if we were to get the result, that is, credit deserves to be where it's due. You know, it, his tactics may contribute to an important win we get on Saturday. So, yeah, it, it measures itself out. But yeah, w with managers, you know, I personally, I think it's got to the stage now. You know, we've seen a lot of sackings at Sunderland Football Club. You know, I think personally, now we should be looking to really question some of these players and have they got the capability to move forward and better their careers. Yeah, um, Terry, I know you want in, but I was just about to read that comment actually by um, the, the DVD game. It hasn't Lee Johnson actually picked up two yellow cards recently for being over animated and out of his area. The thing that I would say is whether you know you approve of it or you're not. You know, a common thing he does is get right up in officials' faces, fourth official and, and the referee in particular, about the decision. So I guess that kind of, to be honest, if people are complaining about having his hands in his pockets, do that completely combat it anyway. Uh, Terry, quickly to you as well. 
on that point alone, really you should be doing that to the players because the players are not performing for Lee Johnson. Nothing to do with the officials. It's the players that, that are pathetic at, at, in the games of past in the past few weeks. But like again, Jack Shields talking talking sense about the managers, uh, the kind of managers we Hello. like to have it. The, the kind of managers we like to have at the club. But I mean, Lee Johnson could make us halfway, couldn't he? He could do what Alanis Morissette once said and have one hand in my pocket and you're the ones giving the V sign, sorry, the peace sign. <laughs> <laughs> Alanis Morissette in the SFC fan TV. Who'd have thought? <laughs> well, you know, very unexpected. I just, think, I, I just think, sorry to interrupt, I just think sometimes right. when it, when you, you've got the, the you've got a manager digging out the fourth official all the time and not so much his own players, is it not the sign of maybe potentially a bit of a weak mentality? That, you know, rather than, rather, I mean, I'm not saying have a go at them in public, but in private, and he might be having a go at them in private, I don't know. But when someone's in at the fourth official all the time, it's maybe the wrong attitude to be blaming the officials when you're 3-0 down to Sheffield Wednesday or something like that, maybe. Yeah, I mean, like managers having a go at referees when their players are quite clearly underperforming or they've quite clearly got something wrong themselves has always been a massive bugbear. Man, you, you don't mind if it's a really tight game and, and, and there's been a controversial decision made. But, exactly. you know, when when you're getting battered in a game, you've got no right to go to the referee, in my opinion, and start criticizing his decisions. Get your own... Get your own stuff right first. And I think a manager who exemplified what you were saying there, really in particular, was Jose Mourinho. In terms of like deflecting the, the the pressure away as soon as his team started dropping off, instantly he starts pointing fingers at the officials, or he even had a go once it was at the club physio or something like that. You know, just just anything he can to to deflect the pressure away from the players. I think is a man management tactic. Um, so I think these things do go on. Uh, Jacob, you wanting in just before? Yeah, I think for me, you know, my take on it, when you see a lot of managers these days, um, I know they like to show their passion, you know, when they're digging out the referee and also having a go at the linesman. That could also also suggest that, you know, they feel that was it the referee, you know, can be a key part of the game, but does that also indicate that they believe that the players need to have the referee on their side for, <clears throat> for them to have a decent result? You know, and have the, does that question whether the manager believes the players haven't got enough quality and they need the referee more to get the decisions right for them to get over the line? You know, who knows? But you know, I'm I personally do like it. You know, I think it shows was it the fact that you know a lot of managers in this league do it. You know, <coughs> Johnson I've seen do it at times. You know, Carl Robinson for Oxford, and also was it Steve Evans who's at Gillingham as well? You know, he's a character on the touchline. So. A lot of managers do it, particularly in this division. But I think you could say at times it's, it's a scrappy division to be in as well. You do get some rough away, rough battles on the pitch, and particularly away from. Home. Yeah, um, just very quickly, I do want to avert players' attention one more time to the poll. Uh, 112 votes have been cast. We've got 166 people watching. You can vote whether you're Lee Johnson in or out. Uh, 56% of people have said in. 44% of people have said out. So if you'd like to. Um, if you'd like to, you know, cast your vote on that, uh, feel free to do so. I would also like to remind you, if you want to like the video as well, uh, 166, 168 now people are watching, uh, 80 likes. So if you haven't already, please do get us to 100 likes. And remember, it's free to subscribe as well. Uh, lads, we are slowly running out of time. We are going to round things up with predictions. Terry, I know you're wanting in. Uh, right, we'll do predictions first. If we've got enough time, we'll, we'll quickly go. Uh, Jack, prediction for Saturday. Uh, I haven't had many draws. I think there'll be a one-one draw. I think we, you know, I think we'll maybe go in front and then fade a little bit. Ipswich will come back into it. We'll be a bit nervous, low on confidence. I think Ipswich will probably equalise and it'll be a draw. Yeah, I agree. I think we'll return back to our old ways. And to be fair, I think I would take a point. Uh, do you yourself? Oh, again. again. How was it even possible? How was this possible? Mine. <laughs> You, you, you're muted you, go on. oh there we go I'm back 2-1 uh, to the lap I'm, I'm on the phone tonight Terry I can't really see the thing <laughs> it's a bit far away I'm not on the laptop as I'm used to 2-1 um, to the lads um, we'll come from a goal down to do it Ross Stewart and Broadheads to get the winner of the event well Adam French of the live chat thinks we're going to lose 3-0 now DJ <laughs> Thinks we're going to lose 4 0, um, but a bit more positively, Jeff Holcroft said SFC 3 2. I presume he's, he's going to mean that way. We're going to win the game. Uh, Terry, your prediction? Yes, if we play my system and my team, we'll win 2 1. <laughs> and if we don't? Uh, I, wouldn't, I don't even want to go there. All right then. Um, but hopefully, hopefully. Sunderland will never be a completely changed club 
until we get the likes of Sam and Pants and Stuart Donald completely out of this club. Simple as. Well, yeah. um, that could be a, a talking point for fun night, but we are just about out of time. Uh, Philly, you, you were joining us for a brief moment there? Yeah, 2-1 Sunderland. This is the start of our winning streak. We had that little blip and now we're back on track again. 2-1. See you. Nice. Nice to see the happy clapper is back there. Um, but there we are. We are out of time. I'd like to thank everyone for watching us tonight. Uh, thank you three, these two lads as well for joining us. So if you have enjoyed uh, the stream, please do give us a like. Uh, don't forget as well, you can uh, still vote on the poll whether you are Lee Johnson in or out. It's free to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, you won't miss out on any future live shows. But to myself, Jack Dodds, from Jack Shields, from Jill Kirkbride, and from Tyler Bad Mistake, uh, thank you all for joining us and we will see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey, little lads and lads.